Hi, I'm Steve Badalak. I'm the Deputy Director of the McGowan Institute for Regenerative Medicine. Our laboratory is uh, very involved in the, and interested in the reconstruction and regeneration of uh, limbs and digits, that is fingers, legs, and arms. There's a tremendous need for the regeneration of such uh, digits and limbs, similar to the uh, regeneration that occurs in starfish and that occur in uh, newts and salamanders. We're, we are interested in determining whether or not we can uh, induce or stimulate a human to actually regenerate portions of their, their fingers and their arms and their legs. Our laboratory has been working in the area of regenerative medicine for many years and we've discovered that the matrix, the material that holds cells together in all of our tissues, my tissues, your tissues, tissues of animals, uh, contains molecules that tell cells what to do. It instructs cells. It's a, an information highway, if you will, between cells. And some of the signals that are included in this matrix uh, are those signals that can stimulate regeneration. Our job, our work, is focused around trying to isolate those signals so that we can use them therapeutically, so that we can treat patients that have lost portions of their fingers or portions of their arms and uh, have them act like a newt or a salamander and uh, stimulate them to actually regrow these tissues instead of just healing them with scar tissue like we would if nothing was done. During the course of our work, we've discovered that uh, when extracellular matrix is used as a scaffold for tissue regeneration, that is when it's used in, in, at the site of an injured tissue, that uh, it actually recruits the body's own stem cells to the site of injury. Uh, stated differently, that means that the reserve cells in your body that have the potential to turn into literally any tissue type can be attracted to a site of injury. This does not normally happen. And we took advantage of the fact that these matrix molecules attract or recruit these cells and have attempted to, uh, to treat uh, both um, animals and people who have had uh, amputations of portions of their fingers and their limbs with, this, with these materials. And we've seen some surprising results. We have, for example, uh, shown the reconstruction of the distal tip of the finger of a 67-year-old uh, gentleman who uh, accidentally got his uh, finger caught in, the, in an airplane pro propeller, one of these toy airplanes, and during the course of treatment actually regrew the end of his finger from about here, here up to here uh, it, over a period of eight weeks. Similarly, we've treated soldiers that have returned from the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq and have lost many of their fingers uh, with, with this same matrix material and shown that we can cause approximately one centimeter or half an inch of length on the end of whatever's amputated from their hands. And this will allow them now to do things they couldn't do before. If the amputation is, is very proximal, where they have no fingers left at all, they can't even do the simple chores of daily living, like making change uh, at the grocery store or picking up a fork uh, or zipping up their, their zipper or buttoning their clothes to growing enough finger for them so that they can do these everyday, everyday chores. This makes a tremendous difference in their life. Why can a salamander or a starfish regrow a limb after it's amputated? And the answer seems to lie in a collection of cells that accumulates at the site of injury in these species. Uh, and, uh, this accumulation of cells is called a blastema. The blastema is a collection of multi-potential cells, that is, cells that have the ability, the potential, to differentiate into lots of different tissue types, like muscle, or bone, or skin, or nervous tissue. And these multi-potential cells, when they accumulate at the site, at this blastemal site, actually know they are pre-programmed to, to multiply, to differentiate into different tissue types, to migrate, to spatially organize into a tissue that's functional and actually is a perfect replicate of the missing tissue. So the question becomes, can we stimulate this same response in people? And we've uh, advanced to the point that we know we can accumulate these cells at the site of injury, 
for example, in a patient that's lost part of his finger or part of his arm. And the, the difference so far is that these cells are not pre-programmed to differentiate into the replacement tissue. Our next challenge is to learn how to make these cells inside the body uh, differentiate and replicate what we see in the salamander. It's not an easy task, but we've got a lot of very smart people working on this, and I'm confident that someday soon we'll figure out how to regrow certain parts of your limb, if not your whole limb. The field of regenerative medicine exists because we're not very good at treating some very common and serious injuries in people. For example, if you have a heart attack, the portion of the heart that is damaged and dies turns into scar tissue that doesn't re regenerate. And if you lose too much heart tissue, you eventually die from congestive heart failure. In a similar fashion, if you should tear some tendons in your shoulder, called, and these tendons are called the rotator cuff, they will not regrow, and surgeons have nothing that they can use to replace those missing tendons. Uh, one of the most common and rapidly growing cancers in the United States, in fact in North America, is cancer of the esophagus. Esophagus is the food pipe going from the mouth to the stomach, and at the present time, if you develop cancer, cancer of the esophagus, or even a precancerous lesion, the surgeons have little choice except to remove your esophagus and then the patients have a very compromised quality of life because the surgeons have got to try to pull the stomach up and attach it to the little bit of, the, of uh, esophagus that's left in the throat and you can imagine how that affects your everyday living, your diet, your weight, and your quality of life. So regenerative medicine exists to, to tackle these problems that currently have no solution. Now we've taken an approach in which the mammalian extracellular matrix uh, is used as a template for the reconstruction of these tissues and we've had some very encouraging results. We have, for example, shown that we can replace esophageal tissue of approximately five to six centimeters in length, which is a, which is a pretty good length of your food pipe, uh, with essentially normal esophageal tissue. If, we're, if we are able to now show that this approach works in people, then we will be able to offer to surgeons uh, an entirely new regenerative medicine, medicine option for the treatment of this serious problem. We've also taken the, taken the same approach and, uh, and have used it to uh, try to regrow heart tissue and have had very good results in the laboratory. We can actually form beating heart tissue in the laboratory. The challenge now is to say, how do we take a laboratory finding and turn it into something that a doctor can use to treat your, your mother or your father or a relative that, that has this sort of a problem? So you can see that the, the field is, is no shortage of challenges. And the approaches that are taken to solve these problems include not just the, the, the extracellular matrix scaffold approach, but also approaches where stem cells are used or where we discover drugs that make cells and matrix work together to form these new tissues. Our bodies uh, are made up of cells and uh, non-cellular material. And these cells form all sorts of tissues. They form bone tissue, they form muscle tissue, they form brain tissue. And these cells are held together by a, a, a glue-like material. It is a material that's termed the extracellular matrix that is outside of the cell. We call it ECM for short, extracellular matrix. And what we have discovered is that this matrix, or ECM, can be isolated and harvested. And can be, we can uh, harvest this material in a lot of different shapes and forms. We can make sheets of material of extracellular matrix. We can make a powdered form of the material. We can even turn it into a gel. And we can then utilize the signals that are present in this material that's been made by the body's own cells as a therapeutic device for the treatment of diseases. And we can use these materials, these extracellular matrix materials, as a scaffold or a template around which damaged or missing tissues and organs can be reconstructed or regenerated. This ECM contains both structural molecules, that is things that, uh, molecules that hold 
cells together, and functional molecules, that is, molecules that contain messages that tell cells what to do, whether should the cell divide, should it move, should it turn into a different type of a cell. That all of this is contained in the extracellular matrix. The method by which we isolate extracellular matrix uh, involves taking a tissue, and usually we take this from uh, an animal that's been utilized for meat production, for example, pigs. Uh, we will uh, harvest the leftover tissues, and we will expose those tissues to both physical methods and chemical and enzymatic methods that, that remove the cells. So if, if you can envision an entire tissue, like a urinary bladder or a piece of intestine, uh, that is exposed to these methods of first mechanically uh, removing the layers in which we're not interested and then taking the remaining tissue and placing it into solutions that contain uh, uh, certain chemicals and certain enzymes that, that break the cells. They, it's called lysing the cells. Uh, we then uh, are able to remove all of those cell remnants and then are left with only the extracellular matrix. That's the magic material. That's really what we're interested in is just the matrix. In fact, when this matrix go, is in, used in a patient, if there are any cells left, it will cause a problem because you can imagine trying to put pig cells into a human the, the, the way we would, would respond to it. We wouldn't like it. Uh, so we need to get rid of the cells and be left with only the matrix, which the body does like quite a bit and, in fact, takes a lot of instructions from. There's another way to, to harvest extracellular matrix from entire organs, like a liver or a heart. We can actually put a catheter into one of the vessels that are normally used to carry blood to that uh, organ like the liver and then run a solution through that those catheters that breaks all of the cells uh, that are part of that tissue up, breaks them up, lyses them and then follows it by solutions that remove those cell remnants and then as you can see with the liver uh, you're left with a very white uh, s s uh, structure, a translucent structure that you can actually look through because it has no cells left and this extracellular matrix now is in a three-dimensional form. So it offers a lot of opportunities for us. We can now take cells of interest, like more liver cells, healthy liver cells, put them back into the three-dimensional liver, and hopefully begin to grow a new organ.